And welcome to the Building Families and Communities show. We're delighted tonight to have a special guest with us, uh, Dr. Stephanie Sweet, who is a local gynecologist here in the Nashville area. Uh, and we're happy to uh, introduce her to and present her to others. Uh, I understand she's been around Nashville for a while doing what she does well. Um, and we're going to talk tonight as a topic. Uh, we're going to take the impact of self-image on women's health and well-being. And I believe that she is well qualified to talk about it. <laughs> Thank you. So again, welcome, Dr. Sweet. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and uh, what you do here in Nashville? Okay. Well, I am a gynecologist, as you said. Mm -hmm. um, I have been in Nashville since 2000, and for a majority of my career, I have worked in academics, okay. uh, mostly with Meharry. Okay. And uh, getting close to three and a half years, no, four and a, three, yeah, three and a half <laughs> years ago, I went out in private practice, okay. and I've been focusing mostly on gynecology. Okay, great, mm -hmm. great, great. That's interesting. You know, I understand that that's it's not a whole lot of uh, uh, women that are in, the, in that specialty, mm -hmm. uh, but as you were saying earlier, it's getting better, I understand. Absolutely. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you, you would think that um, something that is as personal to ladies and women as, as that is, that you would have more ladies in there. Is there a reason why? Well, such a I think sometimes it's the lifestyle uh, okay. when you're in medical school and then choose a residency program. Right. Things are pretty hectic and time is at a premium for uh, oh, social wow. life. So wow. I think because OBGYN is a very uh, involved specialty mm -hmm. that a lot of people might shy away just because of the time consumption. I see, I see. So. It's a matter of how do we balance our personal life with the commitment of absolutely because <laughs> you workload. are committed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I just uh, some things that we wanted to talk about. I know you have a uh, an initiative relative to women's health. Mm -hmm. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? And well. Um, the reason I wanted to talk about self-image uh, and how it impacts on women's health mm -hmm. and well-being is because of what I've learned talking to the ladies that I've been blessed to care for. Okay. Um, okay. Interesting. A lot of times, uh, it was funny for a long time, I used to just tell people, oh, well, I just take care of female parts. But <laughs> honestly, um, the Lord has shown me, no, no. you <laughs> take care of female parts and hearts and I souls. See. And with that, um, recognizing the differences that women carry with them based on how they see themselves mm. and that can positively but sometimes uh, negatively impact on their overall health. Interesting, interesting. You know you said something that's key and that is we have to not objectify mm -hmm. um, um, women's issues mm -hmm. but see them as a, from a holistic standpoint Absolutely. in terms of uh, things that drive their day-to-day activities, emotions, and, exactly, and that sort of thing. So uh, I guess it's so easy for the average person not to even consider those things. Yes, so. and I, it's amazing. A lot of times we as women don't either. Wow. Um, we, wow. as you know, usually gather that family together as we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier mm -hmm. off camera. And um, so many times women will put their health and wow. well being second or third or fourth even mm. so that someone else can be taken care of I and see. I have the misfortune of sometimes meeting women who have been putting things off for so long that now it's kind of difficult to get them back in shape. Interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, <clears throat> culturally mm -hmm. there appear to be this expectation mm -hmm. that the woman is the center of the home and the family mm -hmm. and that justifies her. Uh, not caring for herself exactly as she should. So, is that something that you uh, provide by way of counseling with your patients? <laughs> it's interesting you say that because counseling has definitely become a very large part of my practice, okay. Okay. and um, I get patients that come because they heard, "Oh, well, she'll talk to you, and she'll uh, uh, try to break it down, so to speak." Okay. Um, keep it real. Keep it, it real, <laughs> <laughs> whatever that means at the moment. <laughs> but uh, yeah, on a interesting note, I, I've been going on my own personal journey with faith and okay. learning more. And the reading Genesis a while ago, hmm. noting the uh, in Genesis chapter one, I think it was verse twenty-seven, okay. where the first image comes up 
of man. Wow. You're going to preach my sermon now. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, to say that we were created in his divine image, Absolutely. male and female. And right. so from that moment, it's a discussion about your image being of ah. God. And so I have taken that very seriously. So when I'm talking to people, I try to remind them that no matter what images that we place on them in society or mm. sometimes even in the home, we have to remember who we were fashioned by and why we were fashioned that way. So I think it's verse 31 where at the end it says God looked at everything that he created and he said it was very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so <laughs> I have to tell patients all the time and of sure. course remind myself, right. if God has made this, we can't decide that it's something wrong. That's a, wow, that's, that's, an, that's a pivotal point. Um, and because too many people take the, 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 the discussion and the consideration of God's purpose for you mm -hmm. out of their day-to-day -day function. Absolutely. And, and I wonder if that adds to the stress Oh, and absolutely. The, the lack of guidance. And yes, and you know, you, we live in an age, uh, I'm a 60s baby. Um, okay. We, you know, I came up when the televisions went off at midnight and we I saw that. the national hey, anthem. Don't, don't age us. <laughs> <laughs> we saw the national anthem page. Right, and that that's was right. It. It was, psh, exactly. You gotta, but now with information technology being available 24 hours a day in your phone even, wow. you have wow. to recognize that the imagery has changed and you know body image is a big thing that sure. I talk with sure. uh, women about of all ages sure. and when we look at ourselves I, I want to remind people that advertisements are placed so that they can encourage you to buy something and we don't consider it that way it's right. oh I don't look right if I don't drive this car or if I don't have on this pair of pants or mm -hmm. I'm not this size and so advertisements now the entertainment industry with the some reality shows mm -hmm. are putting images out there that aren't always flattering right. but because we are in this constant um, in, a, in an era where people are constantly being told what they should and shouldn't think instead of listening to what's being taught in the home or right. in the church, it's changing a lot of things wow, about now, how women think of themselves. Now you struck a chord right there mm -hmm. when you talked about home and church. Mm -hmm. um, but before I go there, will you give our listening audience a functional definition of self-image? Well, I'm glad you said that because sometimes it, it changes. Okay. I think a person's self-image fluctuates throughout the day because of the encounters that they have. Mm -hmm. If you wake up in, in your household in the morning and everybody's happy that you're up and you're healthy and, for instance, if you're a young person going to school right. and someone tells you to have a good day and make sure that you had something to eat and when you I get see. home wow. they say, hey, how was your day? Mm. They eat together mm. and then put boundaries in place, Interesting. Very you're going to have a certain outlook on life. But if you're a child, for instance, who no one cares if you got up and go to school, or if they're telling you you need to stay home because you need to watch the kids today because they have something else they need to do. Right. You know, there are so many different scenarios that are unfolding, which is why mm. the family and the church, I think we've kind of lateralized them to Sundays mostly. Right. And right. we were a stronger <laughs> community when we were more family and church centered, sure. and the rest was um, secondary. About uh, two years ago, well, just recently, mm -hmm. um, uh, our organization completed uh, some subcontractual work dealing with human trafficking. Okay. And our function was to identify the indicators and risk factors for young ladies in particular being exploited mm -hmm. in prostitution and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And through a health department study, Metro Health Department study, mm -hmm. I think it was dated 98, and they did a joint study with the police department. Well, they found that there's a correlation between young ladies, their attitudes, their behaviors, um, desire to be recognized through gangs and the drug culture and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, we identified a quite uh, some very alarming things relative to young ladies and how they uh, make themselves bait for mm -hmm. exploitation. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that a little bit in the context of self-image? In it's interesting that you said they made themselves bait. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I find that a little disturbing because they're children. 
Absolutely. Well, they grown, adults did the same thing. Though. I understand, but if it starts if it starts when they're young adults or children, it's because there is a disconnect. Mm. There's someone that's not giving them information wow. to make them value themselves more. And so if there's a disconnect, or unfortunately, sometimes parents and families barter their children. I have seen several circumstances where it's okay for you to date this older person because they're going to pay a bill in the household. So if you're trying to survive as a family wow. and you've decided that that's how to get something paid, whether you're living above your means or otherwise, mm -hmm. it unfortunately can turn into a pretty frightening scenario. I, I know you're like, we weren't supposed to go this deep. No, 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 no. That's, well, I, I, I take a deep breath because that's some, those are some of the, thing, some of the things we unearth um, is the fact that often it's the family that becomes your enemy. Right. Or yeah. if the child was trying to escape because someone was molesting Absolutely. her or Absolutely. making her feel very uncomfortable. So even though it's 2011, mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that still need to be, uh, well, I, I would like to uh, rephrase that. There are a lot of people that need to be re-educated about okay. the vulnerability right. that still exists right. with female children. Sure, sure. Is it possible that you can take a, a female teenager mm -hmm. and she have a scarring event mm -hmm. that goes with her throughout latency in life and mm -hmm. even though she's 40 years old oh, she's absolutely. still living from the context of that teenage pain which goes back to the original discussion if a person has some type of self image or some part of them mm -hmm. that they see as damaged mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or wrong or however they negatively describe it it will impact them for the rest of their lives some women can never have healthy relationships wow. with a man. Wow. Some women hide certain things about themselves because they think that they're, they're responsible when a lot of times they are not. Mm -hmm. um, and those are things and issues that I talk with women about regularly. Okay. For instance, if a person um, had a relationship that left her with a sexual transmitted disease, mm -hmm. It could, it could tailor who she chooses to accept as a partner in the future wow. because they don't want to discuss this with someone else. Mm -hmm. So they feel, well, I need to stay in this relationship and be hurt or disappointed or feel betrayed for a lifetime because they're thinking, and this is a quote, who else would want me? Wow. <sighs> I wish I could tell you you weren't telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Unfortunately. What it seems to me that there should be some sort of structured or codified lesson that mothers should teach their daughters as they're growing up in the various stages of development. Is that off? Am I am I crazy or is it? Well, you know, it's the cultural issue. Some people feel very comfortable, and that's the beautiful thing about 2011. I have a lot of moms that are like educating their daughters from the, right that's before puberty hear. so that that's they are not hear. missing out on certain very important information, right. and their daughters are comfortable saying what they're feeling, what's okay. going on. Okay. But we still have a lot of people who aren't comfortable with that because they think that's going to be a, a ticket to ride, so to speak, and so they are concerned that their children may start um, dabbling in things that they might be ready for. And it's kind of all over the map. And sometimes if the mother isn't comfortable, mm -hmm. then how can she really give, sure. um, what word would I look for to describe it, because I don't want to be too negative, but if she can't give constructive and helpful information, okay. but the only uh, words that she gives are, feel, are fearful, mm -hmm. And, and threats, then that makes a child less likely to want to speak to her mother. Sure. But sometimes it's even grown women. You know, we, we're talking about children a lot, but the, a lot of good and grown women too well, are having concerns and, and we, we just break it on down. I love I was, that my four walls are quiet. I'm glad you said that because, uh, and I've experienced this even within my own personal context with family members. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of latent scars, emotional issues that I think unconsciously drive their chronological adulthood. Mm -hmm. And because uh, specifically within the African-American 
a subculture, some things are taboo. You don't talk about them, right? Right. <laughs> you put them in Pandora's box and mm -hmm. you lock it and you throw it in the water, right? Mm -hmm. And it flows uh, back up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> At some of the most unexpected times. <laughs> yes, it does. And let's go back to the, the church. You know, mm -hmm. I've said many times before, uh, no one has the spiritual and moral, moral authority to provide instruction and guidance to families than the church, better than the church. You can't legislate morality and you cannot legislate what is appropriate, right? And we could talk about spirituality, but mm -hmm. the truth of the matter, in, in the society we live in, there are some civic expectations. Socially, mm -hmm. there are some things. But if nobody teaches you that, how can you be held accountable to them? Exactly. Right? I mean, I have, um, you look at it in a direction of who's, who's teaching us now. Okay. And I think that's one of the reasons uh, I used to curse my mouth saying, oh, it's just too big, you just talk too much, but I finally realized. Don't do that. No, that was the Lord's gift. That was one of his <laughs> gifts that you are supposed to continue to educate and talk to people okay. and give guidelines that were second nature to us because we grew up with them. Right. But there are people now that don't. I had a young lady in my office the other day, she wouldn't get off of her cell phone. And I'm trying to explain to her that this is, you know, I can't communicate to you because she was a child. It's in right. the grown up. Right, right. And her grandmother was in the room with her and we had to end the visit because her phone was oh, the wow. most important thing, which made me know it's not the phone that's an issue. It's this child doesn't have any sense sure. of authority or respect of it. Right. And she's so concerned about what her issues are. She doesn't want to talk about them. Right. And so when you are placed in that position, it's really a limited amount of help that you can give someone when the communication is just so poor. But in all relationships, communication, I have found, is absolutely the most important thing. And it's the one thing that I think we're least skillful in. Okay. It, you're a woman, mm -hmm. I'm a man. Mm -hmm. How does a man respect or in, uh, in, approach a woman in oh, the most way. I'm the authority on that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No, no. <laughs> He's putting me on the spot for real. You know, I think everybody has a different comfort zone. I, 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 I don't mean to be rude, but because I, I think that part of what has to happen in terms of education mm -hmm. is mothers need to teach their sons that there's an appropriate way you, <sighs> you, you engage and Absolutely. you communicate and you embrace, you understand what I'm saying? Help, oh, help me with that like I'm three years old. Let, let. <laughs> <laughs> spot moment, I didn't expect that one. Well, I'm well, sorry. I, I don't no, 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 it's fine, but um, I just think if, if we're going to use a scenario of a mother talking to her son, okay. approach a young lady like you would talk to me. I see. Because if there's respect hmm. to that person, hmm. you can easily transfer it to someone else. So now, Doc, you're shifting the paradigm right now. Because <laughs> you're supposed to see a woman as somebody that's going to ingratiate you and, 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 and satisfy you. And, and, you know, mama, her cornbread is good. Mm -hmm. Green beans and potatoes, that's all right. But right. now we put mama aside and now we got a different time function. Y'all don't get off mama's couch. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you're right. You're right. It's, it's, it, it is a different approach, surely. Okay. However, if I tell my patients a lot, especially young people that are trying to figure out, well, what do I do with this new guy? How do I okay. handle this? Okay. And what I remind them is most of the time when you're looking at trust and love, you've looked inside your family. And you've had years of an establishment of what love and trust means. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when we see someone and we're infatuated, we just shift all of that uh -huh. love and trust to someone we barely know. I see. And I ask them to consider giving it some time because that laugh that you think is so sweet when you first meet them, you might in three months not be able to stand that cackling. Interesting. Interesting. And you, if you don't know someone, you don't know how to deal with it in that way. That's a great point because a lot of times people think that expressions of love is about what I can give you mm -hmm. as opposed to giving it time to uh, define itself. Exactly. Because you don't know that. You, as you pointed out, you don't know. Mm -hmm. You really don't know one another. So mm -hmm. w w how do we get from just seeing one another mm -hmm. to something as intimate as uh, uh, 
becoming one, you know. I, at what point do we cross that? Where, where, where's the boundary? And a lot of people are looking for just that. Yeah. What is it, do you think, uh, from a health perspective, mm -hmm. that the church can do better to engage themselves in this important fight of letting our young ladies know that you're precious, as you pointed out so beautifully. God made you in his own likeness and in his image, and he has a specific purpose. What, what can we do to really? Well, I'm calling on the Lord right now myself. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I just think, look at what Jesus did with women. Okay, wow. When you look at how he related to women in the Bible, mm. it was absolutely unique for a Jewish male authority. And he engaged them. He wanted them to hang out at his feet and Say listen what? to his words. Doc, you changed the paradigm again. I'm right? just <laughs> telling you, ask me, what could powerful. the church do? That is powerful. But actually, powerful. it's and, and, and Jesus was trying, in my view, was trying to get people to see that right. women were valuable too. Right. God right. saw all of his children as important as Genesis 1 made them in his image defines. And so... I know it was a patriarchal society, and in a lot of ways sure. we still have one. Sure. Women actually get to work and mm -hmm. own their own homes, but we still depend and okay. and listen to what our men, our, our male figures, especially those who are ones we trust, mm -hmm. have to say. And women value that, okay. but unfortunately, especially with advertisements in the entertainment industry, a woman's sexuality seems to be all that is on the table. Absolutely. And when we, I'm speaking to young ladies, I have to remind them, your sexuality is a very small part of you. Right. What about your heart? What about your mm. elbow? Mm. What about your artistic <laughs> skills? And when you start breaking it down into sure. that, sure. it helps a light bulb go off in their heads so that they can see, I can demand more than some of the things that people are trying so to offer. So it is in order to demand these things. I think it is. Yeah, I appreciate um, your focus there, and 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 certainly that's needed. Um, sometimes there is an imbalance between our spirituality and our natural life and our walk, and I appreciate you bringing that spiritual flair even into your style of practice. That's the only way I can do it now. Yeah. He's well, opened the door, so I've got to walk on through. Well, praise God. I'm glad that you you. you you've done that. We've come down to our last five minutes. Is there something in particular that um, we'd like to share with the public today that um, you think would be of importance? And well, I gave a talk as we talk, uh, We mentioned um, when we were talking to each other earlier before mm -hmm. we I actually came that I did a lot of, um, well, I still do a lot of uh, sexual health and STD okay. HIV awareness in the community. Okay. And one thing I gave a talk several years ago, and it was titled Love Responsibly. And if you're talking about sex and STDs, of course, the first thing people think about is not at all what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, love responsibly means you love someone in a responsible way. So if you are a parent, you need to consider some of the things that you're saying to your children or images that you are implanting in mm -hmm. them. And sometimes we get frustrated, we're tired, right. and we just right. want to say the fastest thing to get someone to leave you alone when your boss has been on your back all day. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember that sometimes that gentle no or not right now is okay. stronger than or it will, it will have a better impact than saying something negative mm -hmm. just to get them to leave you alone. Um, if you are a preacher, mm -hmm. recognize that none of us got here without sex. And in order to make sure that you have re healthy relationships in your congregation, because there are women and men that suffer in silence sure. because they're too embarrassed sure. to come yeah. and see what your opinion is going to be. Because we're human, whether we're preachers, teachers, Indian chiefs, so we have to be able to take our biases out of conversation sometimes wow. to love responsibly. Okay.
Okay. Um, if you are, I wish I could have made. I wish. I'm sorry, I missed that. that <laughs> like wonderful. But I think love responsibly is just an easy thing for people to remember, so that when they are in a moment and it is someone that they care about, no matter what mm. the circumstance, if they stop for a second and say, "Am I loving this person responsibly?" Right when I make this conversation, then maybe I should hold my tongue. Wow. Because that's what Jesus really mm. was talking about. Mm. Mm. Loving your neighbor is loving responsibility. Are you still doing these uh, presentations? Yes, I am okay. whenever I'm invited. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, so, I actually So you're open it. to coming to congregations? Oh, absolutely. And, and, or community centers? And community sort of centers, thing. Boy Scouts, okay. children's okay. groups, grown women's groups. <laughs> right. I right. actually have had the pleasure of speaking with a couple of NFL teams to talk to the rookies. And that's a very that's interesting a, conversation. Wow. But it, I love it because the men are very, very engaged and have a lot of, a lot more education about some things than uh, the media will lead it to, um, lead people to believe, so. Right, right. Yeah. Wow, that's, 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 that's pretty good. Um, I'll talk to anybody that listens. Okay, okay. And, and your, tell us where your address is, uh, for um, your, your at, name of your practice and your um, address. I'm Stephanie Sweet and my practice is Renaissance Women's Center. Okay. And I am located at 2900 Felicia Street, Suite 101. Okay. And okay. Uh, like right off of 28th and Charlotte. Great, great. And you've been there for about two or three years I've now. I've been at that location for two years now. Yeah, but mm -hmm. you've been in the Nashville area of practice. For 11 years. 11 years. Um, we appreciate uh, the fact that you've come and you've shared with us. We have to have you come back. I'd love to. Thank you so okay. much for having me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, thank you, listening audience, for joining us on the Building Families and Community Show. We will be back with another episode and look forward to having Dr. Sweet come back with us again. I'll be back. All righty. Come.